Hello, my sweet little Helix stands. You have been inundating me with comments on my videos, which I was not expecting. I went away for the holidays and here you are. It's like the horde of Helix stands coming after me and asking me questions. So we're gonna do a real quick Q and A and then we are going to get back to our regularly scheduled programming. So first one, how is your terminal color matched to your Helix color? I use the same theme in both. Next one, Helix is bad because there aren't Vim bindings and IDEs. So this is actually a pretty interesting point. I think it's worth exploring a little bit. First of all, Helix bindings are about as unique as some custom NeoVim bindings. So if you have a NeoVim setup and you've gone to the lengths of putting in all kinds of crazy custom NeoVim bindings, um, then most of the time you will install one of these Vim IDE integrations and it will have vanilla Vim key bindings and you will be stuck without the key bindings that you're used to. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer. So I would argue that Helix is not any worse than you know some custom NeoVim binding setups that I see out there. Um, that said, what you can do now is if you're using VS Code, you can use Dance, the Helix version of Dance uh, for VS Code. Um, that's kind of based on a Cocoon emulator. Now in the future, they're talking about running Helix as a buffer server, which would allow it to easily integrate with IDEs, which would be very exciting, obviously, especially because that typically means that you can have your configuration for your command line tool actually um, influencing the configuration in like an IDE integration. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, next question is, my C-sharp LSP isn't working. All I have to say to that is good luck, have fun. Let me know if you get it figured out. Um, LLVM brew package has LDB VS code, that's true, but the Ubuntu, the Ubuntu package doesn't. All I can say is uh, that I'm really sorry and tell them to get their shit together in a kind and professional way. Um, or check some of the other repositories. Um, see if you can find an alternative repository because there's like a gazillion of them. So how can I save a file on Helix by pressing space W or quit with space Q? I actually hear a lot of people talking about this. Don't know why it's important, but I will show you how to do it. So if we uh, go to config open, you can see that I have added this section here, keys.normal.space with W and Q. If I hit space bar, You'll see now that we have the W for right down here um, and the Q should be in here. Maybe it's overflowing. We'll do config reload. Um, I swear it's in there. You'll just have to believe me. But if I press space W now, you can see that we're actually writing. So that's how you do that. That was easy. Whoa, I really want to try Helix now. Do it. Uh, want to use Helix, but need Flutter integration and DAP. So you actually don't need a Flutter integration and I am going to show you why. So if I, ha I have my own config here, so I go Flutter watch. This is really what you want. You want this chunk of code um, available for you to use. And I'll walk you through it really quickly. What it does is it is it creates or, or it, it um, references a PID file um, with the number of your, I think it's terminal session, shell session, your shell number. Um, this increments every time you open a new shell. And then you wanna create a tmux session, you want to do flutter run and have the flutter tooling set the current PID to this PID file. Uh, then you want to go ahead and open Notamon and you want that to watch in the actual file for Dart files to be saved. And then when it does, you're going to take the contents of that PID file and send a USR1 kill command to that PID, which is what triggers a hot reload. Uh, and then when you're done, you want to remove the old PID file. So I wouldn't expect you to come up with that on your own, but you can just copy paste this and it works awesome. So there you go, uh, that, that solves that problem for you. Um, find replace against workspace. That's what she said. I like Vim bindings, NeoVim plugins are overwhelming. Try Lunar Vim and it's slow. Should I try Helix? Here's what I say, it's always worth trying new things, give them risk profile, 
And luckily, the risk profile of trying Helix is zero. Also, you might want to check out NVChad. Can you show PHP web dev setup? So anytime I'm trying to set up a new language, I do hx dash dash health, for example, PHP, um, and then track down the language server and try to install it. So I'm just gonna do this right now and see what happens. We're gonna do hx health PHP. It's referencing something called IntelliFence. I have no idea what that is. Let's see what happens if I type brew install IntelliFence. I have no idea if this is gonna work or not. If something installs and it shows up on the path, then I'm going to call this a success. No available formula with the name IntelliFence. So you're gonna to have to look and figure out how to get IntelliFence on uh, the path. So you would wanna be able to do which IntelliFence and have it actually show something there. That's your goal. All right, is CZ and FG a Helix thing? Yes, okay, so it is not a Helix thing. It is a shell thing. It works on a lot of stuff, but I'm not sure when and where it works exactly. So if somebody knows, let me know. But what they're referring to there is if I'm in Helix and I do Control Z, it'll put it in the background, it'll say suspended, and I can type FG and bring it back. So it's like a really quick and dirty way to put things in the background uh, without having to use like a terminal multiplexer like Tmux. All right, does Helix have file type icons? So none of these have file type icons. There are, I can't remember what it's called, I think it's like nerd, nerd tree icons or nerd icons. I can't remember what they're called, so bear with me. But, but there's no integration that I'm aware of that like shows them inside the editor. I don't care, some people care, it's an aesthetic choice. Um, in the future, I'm, I'm sure somebody will write a plugin to do that. Right now, there are no plugins in Helix, which is a good thing for now. All right, that looks promising after Vim, NeoVim, Config Hell. Yes, it is very promising. It's one of the reasons I started using it because I just did not have the time or the energy to go through configuring NeoVim. Um, if I were going to try one of the NeoVim, like pre-built ones, the one I would try is NVChad. I tried LunarVim, I hated it. Um, There's just too much going on. It wasn't really clear to me what was going on, too much magic. And Helix got me essentially to the exact same result with zero magic, zero plugins. So I was very happy about that. Your videos are very creative. Hope to see collab with the Primogen. So I challenged him to a friendly coding challenge. I think it was using like ESP modules to like raise a servo with an emoji middle finger on it or something like that. And like whoever got their first one, it was just like something like stupid and fun to do. Um, but he was super busy at the, t at the time. Um, so it never happened, but I really hope he's doing well. I'm really, really proud that we have someone with his voice in the community and his honesty stretches further than he will ever know. So that's what I've got for today. If anyone has any questions or ideas for content, I'm gonna be making more Helix videos because y'all are insatiable. That's what she said. Then go ahead and let me know and we will make it happen. Thank you very much.